previously on Redbeard's Garage. I should hold it, we're done. <laughs> Had to get one inch longer bolts, is that what these are? One inch. One inch longer bolts. Would have went grade eight. These for four of these and four they of them. They didn't have grade eight that long. Oh, okay. For four of them, uh was twenty dollars. It's a good deal. Got that receipt, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So on this front bulkhead, whatever you want to call it, these shock brackets, both of them was cracked right there. So definitely check. If you have a spider box, you need to go over this thing and weld it like we did. You can see I welded those uh, those braces on and then I basically went around everywhere as I could get a bead and welded the far L of it. So this thing should be a ton stronger than it was. And it's definitely a lot heavier. Now we're gonna bolt it up. It sucks we can't paint it, but we don't have time right now. Just like everything is blurry. But, uh, and then you can see how I welded some gussets in right there, and then put another weld down through there. We're gonna weld it from the bottom as well. So now we can bolt it up. We're gonna weld it all the way across the top. So now we're getting the A-arms all put back on, the whole front end put together. And uh, we'll continue on modifying this old year dog.
you know, the first episode comes out, came out today of the 670 and someone said, uh, cause in the video we said something about the instructions. Maybe Brandon had the instructions and uh, uh, I asked him if we was gonna need them. Someone commented and said, men don't need instructions. Well, obviously we do. Because uh, we put these A-arms, the bottom A-arms on wrong. Uh, just thinking that they both would go on top, you know, of the, like this is correct, the top one, but this bottom one's supposed to be on the inside up here. So that means I have to unbolt the shock and then unbolt this uh, ball joint, unbolt the ball joint off the A-arm and flip it. If we would have read the instructions, it said that. <laughs> So first I'm going to uh, take the, the wheels off and then we can uh, start pulling those freaking knuckles off. Backtracking. Okay, so we got this side done. You can see the difference between the two. We had that one where the bottom one's really sprawled out and this one is even. So I'm hoping this is a gonna work out fine I got to still tighten up the bottom shock bolts and I did find out where the squeaking's coming from the squeaking's coming from where the a arms connect to the bulkhead so probably just need to grease it really good and drive it we didn't grease those bolts like an idiot we was going to drill holes in the uh, a arm tubes and put grease alamites but the bushing went all the way through the center so that wouldn't have been a possibility so I probably need to pull the bolts out one at a time one at a time put a little bit of grease, like bearing grease inside the A-arm tubes and then slide the bolts back in there. Later on, right now I'll spray it with some PB Blaster, some WD-40, probably WD-40 to try to lube it. That's definitely gonna actually lift it more than it was before. Uh, because if you can see, the tire will lift it up. I mean, even more than what it already is. So that's what we're gonna do now. Slide that on. So that's, I mean, a while ago we had a jacket up off the ground. Like look how high that tire is off the ground. And this one's touching with the A-arm fix. You can see the height difference though. This tire is completely off the ground. That tire's fine. And it looks like that tire's actually fixed now on alignment, we hope. So if you see on this ball joint, it has this metal, metal side. I'm gonna put some don't get on the rubber let's get on that metal part now we can break this uh this lock nut off there and we can leave this one this one's installed correctly but this one so this one has that rubber and it is a 14 so we're going to grab that there we go. i'm telling you these coleman wrenches came in handy because I was about to have to take one of my wrenches and put it on a grinder and grind it down. I haven't tightened these shocks or, you know, fully, fully down yet. We can lift that top A arm. Just move that all out of the way. i grab that one. Oh my goodness. So we're just gonna flip it just like that. And go ahead and put our, start our nut on there. Put our 14 on the, uh, the bottom of it. Alrighty, now the easiest way to do this I have found is hook the bottom first and go ahead and put that nut on. We can push this down on top. There we go. Same thing, just grab the top of that ball joint without damaging the the rubber, because the rubber the rubber little things on those ball joints, little boots, keep dust out of the ball joint and dirt, which is gonna end up killing your ball joint. Same with your tie rods. Uh, just that rubber keeps the dirt out of it and keeps it from ruining your ball joints and tie rods. 
I'm gonna put our spacer back on and our wheel. Bam. Thing is golden, so it's about to be lifted even higher than it was before. That's a huge <laughs> Look at that thing. That's awesome. So now I just got to tighten down the shocks, the shock bolts, and I need to grease those the a arms where they hit the bulkhead but i'm telling you this thing is going to be a whole different monster when we because before you would ride across the yard just like you know at 20 mile an hour across the yard and the shocks was completely bottoming out i mean we'll show you so we went from these shocks right here it's a little dinky you know moped shocks to those 150 cc shocks from go power sports it looks awesome i think those are uh 150 c those are rear shocks for a 150 cc on go power sports and they're awesome shocks they last a long time they perform really well so yeah that's a ton ton better so that's straight so we're definitely going to have to realign it no big deal yeah this wheel's pointed in so that means it needs the tie rod needs to draw it in a little bit same thing with this one it needs uh the back of the tie rods need to draw it in some. So here's the uh, new hubs with the disc brakes. Like I said, these are Go Power Sports three piece disc brake kit with disc. $179 for three disc and the whole brake set. That's a crazy good deal, in my opinion, because if you buy just pit bike brakes that come with a master cylinder and a caliper, it's $40 for the ones that are in America. You can get them a lot cheaper, order them from China, but of course, you're going to be waiting two to three weeks um so we got these hubs that'll bolt right up to our rims we had to go get a 5 8 one inch long spacer to put on here and uh, i've already tried this out actually i'm gonna have to use another spacer on this side so the nut and washer will sit in there just right let's see so the kit comes with two long spacers and two short spacers. We already have one of the shorts. Uh, these would have been perfect to put behind the, the hub, but I would have had to bore them out. They're not quite uh, 5 8 bore. So these was unusable. So what I did was went down to Ace Hardware and bought two 1 inch 5 8 spacers. Um, then these small spacers will go on the outside of the hub for the washer and nut to ride against, which I'm going to install now. You can see. That's perfect. So I like mine a little stiff, you know, not not a ton, uh, you know, where they just don't free spin because they will break in over time and give them a little wiggle, wiggle room. So that's perfect right there. So we got this three piece brake kit and it's nice because it also has the brake light um little actuator on there so we can hook up brake lights on this because i do want this buggy to be as street legal as we can get it just because i think that would be cool to have full headlights tail lights signals and of course we're going to have to make some type of a mount for this uh this to set behind the brake pedal and be out of the way of the suspension so i'm gonna have to mount it up kind of like that and just make sure you know when the suspension flexing that it'll be out of harm's way and then we're gonna have to re uh hook up this pedal just trying to think of the best place for these brake lines to go i'm kind of thinking it may be okay for them to go won't even fit through there actually so if i I did this right here that would allow me to bolt it up and then I'm gonna turn this cable I'm gonna have to loosen this we'll have to re-bleed them but loosen this and adjust the uh, brake line then I can kind of zip tie it to the actual a arm and allow it to go through there I don't have any bolts that is exactly the size I need so we're gonna have to do a thick set of of washers on these bolts 
So look at how many washers I'm having to run. Uh, this is a one inch uh, 5 16 bolt, but I only need like a maybe a half an inch bolt, but that's all I have. So unfortunately the uh, the wheel is hitting the brake caliper. I was a little bit worried about this because these are just, uh, they're not nothing huge. Uh, these are 20 by 7 by 8, so I, I, I was a little worried about it hitting hitting the wheel but uh, let me show you here come on baby you can see the wheel oh, yeah, it's right up against it. is it yeah yeah you can see that it's just touching I mean it's it's not much it's honestly probably yeah it's gonna be a problem because even look right here oh, yeah. the spindle is like touching it and it has to I can't space it out any further than uh, what it already is because this caliper has to line up. So what I've done is I went on eBay for $37. I ordered two, a set of two, two inch wheel spacers. These are four by 110. So I'll be able to kick the wheels out two inches on each side, which I wanted to do anyways to make this thing more stable. You know, because we did, the center of gravity is is off now with it being lifted so i'm afraid that it's going to flip easier i'm sure uh and you know we want to kind of protect us against that if possible we're going to have a roll cage this time because i flipped it the the back bar hit me in the head and about messed me up pretty bad i mean i had a pump knot i'm not kidding you like three inches off the back of my head i wasn't wearing a helmet of course being dumb now we wear helmets because go-karts aren't you know worth losing your brain over so i ordered some wheel spacers going to be here in like three or four days that's unfortunate uh we'll just have to either take the caliper off i think if i bolt these wheels on it'll be fine just to roll around because the only place this thing's going to get rolled to is outside if we need to do another video so i may just bolt it up and uh we're gonna gotta go get some lug nuts as well because these wheels got a pretty decent size hole lug nut hole in them and these studs are are kind of small so what we're gonna have to do while we wait on the wheel spacers get here is we're gonna have to pull these brakes off um, because I also I mean the amount of washers I had to use on that side is ridiculous basically I need a 5 16 a coarse thread half inch long bolt so I'm gonna have to go to town here in a little bit to get lug nuts for these uh, for these new hubs and so I'll just go ahead and buy four bolts so when my wheel spacers get in we can put the brakes on and we're gonna have to before we can really put this brake kit on uh, we're going to have to extend the frame because I am making the cockpit about 10 to 12 inches larger inside. What that'll do is let me be able to adjust my seat back further. And uh, also we're going to put sliders on the passenger seat as well because we're going to put an old poop handle on the dash. And I'm thinking I may cut this whole entire dash section out when we get the row cage built and bend a new dash a little bit taller because this front end kind of looks short for how big the go-kart's gonna be. Uh, we'll see how that'll work out, but I really want somewheres for the passenger to hold on to very safely. I mean, once we get the harnesses in, like I said, they can place their thumbs inside the harnesses and grab those harnesses. But, uh, you know, I want maybe to put a handle here and maybe even a handle here to hold on to. We'll have to see how we're gonna do that because uh, we plan on making this thing a lot faster and, you know, more power. It's gonna get scarier. <coughs> so we got those wheel spacers in the mail headed here right now so now we can start on the rear axle we are putting a 54 inch axle um, so that's going to be a 10 inch wider axle we had a 44 on here last time and we did bend it because when we jumped the driveway we'd land on you know if i was by myself when i jumped the driveway it kind of throw the go-kart on the driver's side because i'm a 250 pound man sitting in the driver's side so it would land all the weight on that one back tire end up bending that axle the weight of the cart and me so what we're going to do is build some extensions that hold the um the axle right behind the wheel so this will have five axle bearings we already did a new suspension set up very soon so this axle is really not going to stay on there very long but uh we do want to test out some stuff uh you know in the meantime we're getting that new torque converter on its way the the 780 series that'll handle 55 horsepower so no more worrying about ripping up a belt on the trail that's the thing i want this thing reliable so we can take it crazy off into the woods and not have to worry about anything we can climb anything we want and then uh the suspension setup we're going next 
is fully independent rear suspension with CV axles and everything. What we're going to do is we're going to put a breather set up and seal the torque converter. We're going to try to anyways. Seal the torque converter so we can go mudding on this thing and not have to worry about slipping the belt. So that's going to be awesome. Um, definitely stay tuned guys. We got another episode coming out next week on this where we're doing the rear axle. Uh, we're going to put... Uh, you know the wider axle build those axle hangers so uh, make sure to stay tuned for that and then also we should get our um our spacers in the mail uh so thank you guys for watching make sure to go check us out on patreon and you can send this stuff to our po box and check us out on instagram facebook and uh, snapchat uh, thank you guys so much for uh helping us grow we're almost to 45,000 subscribers that is awesome uh, we started this thing a little over a year ago you know really trying at this so it's awesome to see where we've came and uh, a lot more stuff coming to the channel too we're going to have some car stuff we're going to be rebuilding the carbureted 350 with some aluminum heads uh, my brother has a 2000 or a 99 uh chevy 1500 and his ls is you know starting to smoke and stuff i know some people don't consider a 5.3 an ls but i consider it an ls so um it's starting to smoke and stuff so what he's going to do is he's going to pull the transmission and the motor and put a 350 turbo and a carbureted 350 in it uh for now until he can rebuild his uh 5.3 and i think that would be a pretty sweet video to show changing a fuel injection truck to carbureted and see how much power that thing's going to have because he has some pretty sweet parts to throw in that old heavy chevy so a lot of car stuff coming we've got a mustang my brother's building too we're going to throw on and then i'll be building a car uh over probably towards the end of next year so definitely stay Stay tuned guys uh, thank you for helping us grow and uh have a happy new year we'll see you on the next one rub your garage is powered by gopowersports.com gopowersports has a huge amount of awesome go-kart and mini bike parts and when making your purchase use the red beard discount code in the upper right hand corner of your shopping cart to grab yourself a sweet deal Hit that subscribe button and make sure the notification bell is on so you'll never miss another episode. And go check us out on Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, and Pinterest to stay up to date with the channel. Guys, always come back to Redbeard's Garage. I'm out.